Derek, you got my SD card? What SD card? What SD card? Hey, hey, I'm asking, do you have my SD card? Oh, your SD card. Yes, that's oh, right. Oh, my bad. All right, all right, all right. Back up. All right, all right. What SD card? Fair enough. Guys, your boy DeAnthony, got my boy Adon here. We're missing one, but I'm sure, I'm sure he wants to be here, but he just couldn't. Uh, miss you. Miss you. Art? <laughs> no. Uh, so today, we're going to talk about War Dogs. Yeah. Boom, baby. I really like the movie. So this time, what we're going to do, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to do our break room blitz in the beginning for all you guys who, you know, don't want any spoilers or whatnot. So we're gonna just run it down. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. For, for, so for me, it. I liked it. It was definitely a good action movie. It definitely had my attention the whole time. It was funny. Jonah Hill is gonna be funny either yeah. way. He's gonna just throw some random stuff in there. So I, I definitely appreciated him. I like their dynamic between the two. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, they really seemed like they could you know balance each other out. Um, I definitely got my uh, my action that I wanted. Uh, they were they were pretty. They wouldn't be in there doing all that, but. It, they the, the movie did a good job of that. Um, yeah. I definitely liked his girlfriend. I liked um, pretty much everything. I liked the, the the score. I liked how they incorporated all the uh, foreigners. I actually felt like they were really where they said they were, you know. So I definitely did appreciate that. Um, yeah, I, I just liked it. It was if I had to rate it, if you want to know right now, um, I would probably give it an eight. It's kind of like um, yeah. Wolf of Wall Street. So if you like Wolf of Wall Street. You're gonna like this movie. It was kind of like the same tempo, same, right, same movie yeah. style. So you're gonna like it for sure. Yeah, I didn't have very many big gripes about this movie. It was just like thoroughly entertaining the whole way through. It's a, it's based on a true story, and they're walking you through. They're telling you about uh, this each character, uh, where it follows like this Miles Teller and uh, Jonah Hill the entire time, and the dynamic between the two of them. Like he said, you know, you got one of them that's like super chill, hates his job, and the other one that's just like. I don't care. I'm going to do what I want and it's I'm going to make a lot of money out of it and you know just having that you know good side dark side kind of play into it and they get themselves into like so many freaking predicaments you know it's like ridiculous um and yeah I mean there's action there's it not, not that there's a lot of action but there's a lot of like uh pace there's a really good pace to the movie where they're still telling you the story still giving you this info and um yeah, I mean, it, it was just, you know, funny when it had to be serious at times. And it, it's really interesting, like, the way that they break it down and how, you know, they uh, uh, t talk to you about, like, you know, okay, these are, you know, in, you know, 2008, you know, we were arming the army and really anybody could get these contracts. So it was actually really informative, too, at the same time. So I like that. I got that Wolf of Wall Street vibe. I got the uh, big short kind of vibe, like that documentary style of storyline. So I, I thoroughly enjoyed the movie. I wasn't bored at all. Um, and yeah, I mean, with him, with the rating, I would have to give it probably like a 7 out of 10. But it was really good. Yeah. All right, 7 out of 10. Yeah. All right, that's our blitz. So if you don't want to know any more information, <laughs> just go ahead and turn it off now. Right, we saw the skit, we heard the blitz, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> right, but we hope that you stay with us. <laughs> right. Because we, we have some good stuff to talk about. Yeah, yeah. All right, so what do you think about... Miles Teller. Miles Teller, you know, like, so, so. Is he I, doing he, it for you? Yeah, you know what? He, you know, I bought him in this movie because, like, you know, he, you know, it, it follows him. He likes at this like really crummy job. He's a uh, massage therapist, and you know, I, I really bought that. Like, he, he didn't like doing what he did. He tried to do something else, but that too wasn't working. And he, those he, sheets he had, that to me was the dumbest idea. So he ends up ever. buying, like, the, he spends a fortune, Ugh. like, I don't know, his savings on so many sheets. He's trying to sell these bed sheets to old folks' home, only to find out that, <laughs> you know what, I can't sell these because nobody cares. He about got like old thousand folks. count silk sheets Boxes. or something like that. <laughs> yeah. And no one, like, thousand count sheets, no one, no one's buying that for no old folks. And, it, which right. I think they should. Right, it, but absolutely. I guess, bottom line, yeah. they're not. They, 
they don't they don't deserve it, I guess. Exactly. In the movie, like uh, one of the guys that he was trying to sell it to, he's like, imagine wrapping a lizard in silk. That was so <laughs> messed up. I was like, up. wow. I'm like, man. <laughs> That's you think about your old. Like, films. would you like, wrap a lizard in silk? Would right, you? Right. He's he's like, like, then why would I? Right. <laughs> yeah. And so, I mean, you know, it follows him. He hates his job. He tries doing something else. Doesn't work out. Puts himself in a hole with, you know, this debt of these sh silk sheets. <laughs> he said he spent his whole life savings on these sheets. I'm like, Lots of money. Slap! Yeah. <laughs> Why would you do that? And, and so he has them stored in his apartment with his girlfriend, you know, and it's just taking up a ton of space. Uh, goes to a funeral, finds Jonah Hill's character, and he's like, hey, I remember that kid from uh, high school. Uh, my mom didn't want me hanging out with that guy. Uh, he was a bad influence or whatever. And, you know... He doesn't know why, and he finds out later throughout the story why he shouldn't be hanging out with him, you know? So, I mean, Jonah Hill's character is involved in actually selling the guns, and he was just like, you know what? I'll sell guns with you, too. You know, why not? Let's make right. it a business. And so they start selling, you know, all these guns. He shows them the business, and they get themselves into crazy, you know, predicaments. So yeah, Jonah you know, jo Jonah's Hill character, he, he's ruthless, too. He's definitely ruthless. Uh, the way the movie starts off, he starts off absolutely smoking weed <laughs> right. in his car, waiting on his client. Yeah. And all of a sudden, he's a, a the next maybe few months, he's yeah. a millionaire doing three hundred that three hundred million dollar contracts. I'm oh, like, yeah. man, it must be nice. Yeah. Gosh, yeah. you know. So, you know, I I actually admire uh, um, massage therapists, and I think that's kind of cool. Um, I know it probably doesn't make what he would like to make. Them sheets is what really did it for me, though. Like, that right. was just dumb. You yeah. can make a pretty good living off of being a massage therapist, especially, you know, massaging those, you know, rich folks. Yeah, yeah. But absolutely. the sheets, though, I'm like, who gave you that idea? I don't know. Like, <laughs> where'd you read up on this? Someone you just read an article real quick and then just say, you know what, I'm going to do this. It wasn't really thought out, and you kind of can see that. And Yeah, yeah. it was pretty dumb. Yeah, it was pretty dumb. Um, I liked... You know, so I have some friends that, you know, I grew up with, and then we kind of, like, separated, and yeah. then whenever we do see each other again, it's like, nothing ever happened. So I did like that fact of the whole story, you know, he meets yeah. his, his best friend at the funeral, and they're like, oh, man, where you been at it? We haven't seen each other in probably, what, maybe like 10 years, something like that? Yeah, they 10, they, years, About yeah. 16, they mm -hmm. separated. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think when, to know if you have a really good friend... Mm -hmm. Or even a family member or whatever. I say put money mm -hmm. in the in the picture, put the opposite sex in the picture. Oh yeah. And then you'll really see if you got a best friend or something like that. Because people do change yeah. when you put money in their in their pocket. Yeah. And he he seemed as if he was genuine, but that money though, man, like when he was upset that they got undercut or they undercut everyone by fifty three million dollars. Even though they still made a lot of money. They, on they it. made three hundred million. Yeah. But you upset about 53. Yeah. It's like, I know you guys probably seen the chair that he's like kicking a wall. Ah! Yeah. Over 53 million. Right. And that's his personality in it. And his friend's like right there. He's like, but dude, we, we still did really good. Right. You like, know, we got the contract. Why are you kicking a wall? Right. Exactly. <laughs> like, chill. Like, we might not have gotten it if we would have been you know, a little closer to the competition. Yeah. So, because really, you know, if I'm, if I know that someone is reliable and you know has you know good integrity mm -hmm. and they're close to someone that's new mm -hmm. i'm gonna always go with the person that I'm, that's reliable yeah. so the fact that they were 53 million they'd have been like 10 million they might not have even went with them so he yeah. should have just kind of realized like let me just be grateful right that we even got the contract so yeah. it was really interesting i kind of want to like i'm like are they still doing this because I will go buy some guns and sell them. <laughs> right. Like the way that they actually, so they really break it down for you. You go on this website. These are all the things that you can sell to the government or the army. And, you know, you just pick one and see if you could fulfill the order. You right. Know? And, and it's just like up for grabs. Right. You bid for the order. Whoever gets the best uh, offer, that's who they're going to pick. And then yeah. if you get it, then you make the money. Yeah. Now, I ain't never even heard of this before. Right. They so, still doing this? Yeah, I mean, it, the order could be like, you know, 10 grenades. We need somebody to sell us 10 grenades. All right, I can sell you 10 grenades for about, you know, a dollar each, you know? And it's like, all right, well, I'll sell it to you for 50 cents. Right. Well, there you go. You just won the bid. What do you think about um, um, Teller's girlfriend? 
Teller's girlfriend. See, she's an actor that I had never seen before. I've never seen her in my life. I've never seen her, but she she's was cute, though. She was super cute, first of all. Man. She had a really cute accent. Now he's pulling that? That's what I'm Man. saying. <laughs> hey, with all the these sheets say. around here, like, <laughs> right. yeah. she stay with you even though you uh, make bad business decisions? And she jokes with him about stuff, too. It's like, right. like are you okay? Like, uh, you, you sound like, I mean, you just came from a funeral right now. You, you seem like you're high. Right. <laughs> it's like, we got nachos and pizza in the kitchen if you want. <laughs> He's like, what we do? <laughs> we never have ice cream. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, nah, we don't. All right. with you. you know, but, and, and you brought up a good point because I felt like with how they introduced her yeah. and how she ended up, to me, she broke character. Because she had his back with, you know, coming in the house, smoking weed, with these dumb sheets that you're never going to sell. You know, they were, I mean, they weren't poor, but, you know, they didn't, yeah. made, they have a lot, you know, yeah. so she seemed to have his back through whatever. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know, he, she finds out that he, you know, did say some, some little white lies. Right. You know, omissions. Some people might say they're lies, but omissions. Yeah. And it really was in, in their benefit, really. Because honestly, as a man, I don't want to stress out my woman about every little thing. Especially if she's pregnant, about to have your baby. Exactly. So yeah. she found out some white lies that he was telling, and then she just like was like, forget you, I'm moving, I'm leaving. Taking right. the baby. One and, of my moms, and right. I'm out of here. Exactly. Yeah. And then like for Christmas, and they're on the, um, the Skype. She right. can't even, he can't even talk to the baby or whatever. Oh, we gotta go, we gotta go. Like, yeah, yeah, I'll talk to you next week. Right? What, next week? Right, Jesus. what about tomorrow? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, that was, that was, but I did like her character. I feel uh, like they just didn't write her well at the yeah, you know what? second half of it. Yeah, that, that, that's the best way to put it. I, I don't feel that they read it well because she was back and forth on it. You know, she was like, you know I don't like the war, I don't support the war, you know? And right. he's over here supporting the war that she finds out. But then they continue on, they get back together or whatever, and then, you know, she finds out later, like, oh, well, I, I can see why you were, like, you know, uh, doing this for the benefit because this must really stress uh, stress you out, having to provide for me and my baby. I mean, we're pregnant and stuff, right. you know, about to have a family. I understand what you're doing is good. And then she finds, like, all this money and like, wait, hold on, <laughs> you know? And so she's, like, back and forth with it, right? So, <laughs> so you telling me you haven't lied about this million dollars that you hid underneath the sink? It's our money. It doesn't matter. Yeah, right. I hid it because, not from you, right. but because you never know what's going to happen. You might need that extra cash. It's not, right. not hiding it from you. Right. I'm just putting it away. Yeah. And she just blew up and left. And I was like, yeah. oh my gosh. Yeah. And oh, he, 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 I mean, the whole time they're, they're only selling guns to the U.S. military. Right. No other military. It's not like they're funding both wars or anything like that. Like, here, you, you want to buy these guns? You want to buy these guns? Okay, you guys are going to fight each other anyway. But, you know, I think they do that. I think that they do that. Oh, I think absolutely. That... And I think that that... Okay, so there's another big character in this movie that's kind of like, like not a lot of screen presence, which is Bradley Cooper. Right. And uh, in the movie... He but it was, was just enough, though, I felt like. It, yeah, it wasn't overwhelming. It was their about movie. Him. It wasn't his movie, right. Exactly that. Exactly that. He was just the instigator, though. And puts him in a predicament, right? Right. And so, uh, I mean, his character, I can see funding both sides of, like, whatever war, you know, kind of thing. But he didn't seem like a bad guy, though. He didn't seem like a bad guy, but it was just enough for you to think that he's a bad guy. Because he could have killed uh, what's not Teller, and yeah. he didn't. Absolutely. You know, yeah. so I think he's like a, I do what I have to do. Right. But as long as I'm not pushed. Mm-hmm. I'm a, good, I'm a good person. Which is most people. Right. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. going to do what they have to do. Yeah, I'm going to take out the threat because you're threatening me. Right. All right. We're exactly. Done. Yeah. You know, so and so I did appreciate his role. Um, I thought that the part where, I don't know, I think that some of the things that, I don't know if it was if it was the, the part that was true or it was the part that was just written, yeah. but when they got like the, the boxes that were all the um, AK-47 shells that were in the box, the Chinese boxes. They were Chinese. They were, they so were like, sweet. what are we going to do? They were so yeah. upset. I'm like... Just change out the boxes. That's Done. not even a thing. Yeah, I would like, have why are we even talking about this? Yeah, you calling the people? Why are you trying to screw us? No, what? Just change the boxes, man. Right. That was easy. But I mean, that's what they ended up doing anyway. Right. But it was just to me, they made more. It made it more. They made it more dramatic than it needed to be. They wasted a lot of time on that aspect of the right. movie. But I think that that's ultimately what they got caught with anyway, uh, because the person that they hired, they actually didn't pay. To actually help them put the stuff in one box right. and the I, other box. I didn't understand that with Jonah Hill. Like, I mean, it, I mean, it's not Jonah Hill, but his character. His character. Yeah. I'm like, 
He plays Why? a greedy character. He's very greedy. He wants to hold on to everything. And Why so... don't you pay? You gotta pay the man. Just pay the guy. Like <laughs> you can't nickel and ask that thing. When people in business, people just don't understand that sometimes it's all about you know the quality. So if I if you give me quality work, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna pay you quality with quality funds. Right. You know, it's not. I'm not gonna you know nickel and dime for every single thing. Like right. if you want to continue to add the high quality that you produce, right. Then you're gonna have to pay people. High quality, exactly. Because either they they'll leave, go somewhere else, or exactly they'll do that. a bad job. You want to build a good rapport or with a snitch person. On you. Oh, they're snitch. <laughs> they'll snitch on you. It's like you know what? Forget it. I'm not getting paid anyway. Right. You know. So it. I mean, I know that people like that, but yeah, it's just it's really sad, you know. But this this movie was really about the American greed. It, it was about American greed. It's based on a true story. These guys did you know time for doing this whole crime with the war and you know selling the wrong stuff to the army. Right. So, so they, they ended up going to jail yeah. with, they had 70 federal accounts against them. 77 federal accounts for Jonah Hill's 77. character. 77. He and, got charged with that. Right. And, and he only How many years? Four, four years. years in jail. Four years. And Miles Teller character, he did seven months. Seven months. House arrest. Right. <laughs> House arrest. House arrest. It's like, okay, you get to spend seven months with your family now. You know? <laughs> And be rich still. They didn't take any money away. They didn't take any money away. And they're eligible to be able to sell arms again in 2022. That's right. They, they, I'm like, no, they, you're done. Yeah. You, you got 70 federal accounts against you. Now. You can never do it again. Even, and they didn't fully explain this either, but I had to circle back around and think, okay, they might be um, penalized for not selling anything for a certain amount of time. But that's not saying that they don't have to partner up with somebody and they can do the selling. Oh for yeah, them. the business was the one that couldn't do it. Yeah. For until 2020. Right. And not the actual person. Yeah. So it could so, be under a different person, and they could be one of the other people that are under that pyramid. Right. You know. So it was like, man, must be nice, boy. Because let me be with an ounce of weed, and I'm going to jail, boy, yeah. for some years. So loopholes and loopholes. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, man, it must be nice. But that I mean, was shocking. I mean, that's the world we live in. You know. So it's not like they were trying to portray something that's not real. No, it is what it is. You know. So, but uh, I, you know, I definitely liked it. I know we're getting towards the end. But it's uh, I enjoy myself. It's a true like, story, and I, I, they the portrayed through. it really well. Each character they portrayed it very well, you know. And it just goes to show you, you know, you keep your friends close and you know enemies closer, I guess. Because I mean, these guys were pretty close, and then towards the end of the movie, you know, uh, Jonas Hill character tried to swindle his so-called best friend. Uh, yeah, My, but, but they stayed I, in character the whole they, time. They though. stayed in character. They never broke even up until the end when they were in the elevator. He was like, "Absolutely, Do you ever tell the truth." It's like you never tell the truth. It's like you're you're actually acting to be my friend right now, right. just so that I don't um, uh, uh, testify against you in court. Right. You know, right. it's like you know what? Boom, we're done. That you know? part was awesome. Yeah. Uh, I was I was like I've been did that. Oh yeah, long time ago. Long time ago. Once I didn't have the. Uh, uh, the, the, the contract. contract. He ripped up the contract. I punched it a long time ago. If you ago. leave a contract with someone, make sure you at least take a picture on your cell phone. Right. Bloop, make a got copy. A copy. <laughs> make scan a copy, it. Scan something. it. Email it to yourself. Right. Something, because you know something tangible. Mm. Right. So it's even if we, when we start making some money, we haven't made no money yet. There will be no contracts. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right. We're friends now. Right. right. We can write out a contract so 50, just 50? in case. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got to well, do a third. 33. 30, 33. 33. Right. All around the board. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, we got your contract. Don't worry about it. We'll, of course. We'll let you in on it. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the movie. I mean, they're going around in, you know, the Middle, the middle East, you know, just driving around guns. And, you know what? That's another thing I liked. You know, when they were actually um, going to, going to those places? When they were in the Middle East. I was kind of nervous. Oh, absolutely. Did you like, see those guys? I mean, just like, <laughs> I'm afraid of maybe, you know, gangster looking guys, but those guys are like straight up something else, you know? Yeah. They are like guerrilla fighters, like... And you don't even like, know no where hesitation. you are. You don't know where you are, who you're around, what mm. their intentions are. You don't know the language. Like, no. you don't know anything. You're just there. And they were pretty ballsy to walk up to someone and be like, yo... Oh, yeah. 
Can you help us out? I need you to transport us somewhere. I need you to help us smuggle these guns right. From, right. from this country to this country. Because they like, could have just took right. their money and, and never show it up. Like, all right, I got $1,500. Take a walk. Sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah. Like in, the, like in the beginning when he gave that guy 300 bucks for the weed. Yeah, he gave him 300 bucks to buy weed. He's like, what weed? Right. I don't know what you're talking about. Do you know what he's talking about? No, right. I don't know. You know this guy? I've never seen the guy before. Not in my life. Like, that was messed up. <laughs> yeah, so I mean... When they're out in the Middle East, you know, it really set the scene there. They they went out there, they filmed a bunch, and it it was, you know, it was hilarious. It was like, are we going to get away with this? Is this safe right now? We're in the middle of the day smuggling these guns. Yeah, yeah it's 50-50. Like, 50% we die or what? Like, yeah, 50-50. What about at night? Yeah, 50-50. <laughs> He's like, he doesn't know what 50-50 is. Right. Like, but I do. Right. So that's not good odds. So the smuggler, the person driving the truck with the guns that were in, was in um, uh, in Iron Man One. He was in Iron Man One. He was the one that uh, brought him into the cave and hooked up the uh, uh, battery to his chest. Okay, so I didn't like Iron Man One. So oh. <laughs> I don't remember anything about it, and, and it could be because I already knew the story and they just retold it. But and... uh, this movie's about friendship, and so is Iron Man, and I'll still be your friend even though you don't like <laughs> Iron Man. So I, it was there just to me it was mediocre series, you know, with part two uh... and definitely part three, which is terrible. Can't you can't tell me you like part three? This guy. Oh uh, no, nobody likes part three. Okay, yeah, no. thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, just a little fun. Guy. I mean, he looks familiar, but I, I didn't know that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I think he did a good job. I think everyone did a good job. There was no people who just like. I wonder what happened to the driver though. Uh, they just never knew. Just no, just disappeared. That was it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, what's the name's character said, so "Don't ask any more questions." Yeah, Bradley Cooper. So at the end of the movie, uh, uh, so Miles Teller's character goes back to actually being a massage therapist, like. Says, screw it, I'm just gonna do something safe, something I know, provide for my family. Right. And he goes, shows up to uh, one of his clients, and it's Bradley Cooper, the antagonist of uh, this whole situation that brought him in this like crazy predicament. And you know, he asks him, like, do you know what happened with my driver out there? And he says, you know what? Don't ask any more questions. Right. And I was like, man. I mean. I mean, I guess someone had to go, I guess. Yeah. You know, there's a lot yeah. of money floating around, people getting no backstabbed and yeah. stuff, so I guess someone had to go, but yeah. it had been nice to know, you know, because he was, he was a nice guy. Yeah. He was a nice he guy. Was very nice. His he was, character he was, was funny. nice anyway. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I mean, that's the movie, guys. You know, they're just running guns, yeah. going in the Middle East, running guns, um, uh, and, and they end up getting caught doing some illegal stuff, mm -hmm. you know. And it's mostly about greed, you know. So it's all, it's all about American greed, and it's uh, when you when you're greedy. It's, like, I mean, it's all about watching those friendships that you think that you have. Yeah, you know? I, 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 you know, when I was in I was in college, I actually had a best friend I thought I was gonna have for life, and you know, we end up not being friends. He didn't want to fight me over his girlfriend. So I tell you, you put the opposite sex or money in between someone, you'll yeah. see. If they're a good friend or not. Wow. It's really, wow. it was really, and she was, she was ugly, yo. I'm, I wasn't trying to get, I hooked them up. Wow. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Man. Break Room Blitz, like and subscribe. Ooh. Think about our shirts, guys. Ooh, real quick, Metal Gear Solid. Look, That's hilarious. Good. Yeah, I had to. You know, I grew up on Charlie Brown, so. All right, you know, I had on. to do it. And uh, it was a pretty good price, too, so. There we go. Um. But Break Room Blitz, like, subscribe, let us know what you think. If there's anything that you guys want us to review, let us know. Anything that you guys don't like or you want us to change or you think could, you know, do better, uh, just let us know definitely because we definitely want to improve. You know, we're new. So we appreciate the support and it's a lot of effort into these uh, uh, skits that we do. So please go ahead and like it just for that. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, I'm DeAnthony. I'm done. And we're out. Later. Peace. Peace. <laughs>